Hi friend, I hope you're doing super super well. So in our series on people who kept carrying the gospel forward to different places, different people groups, I want to talk to you today about Saint Francis. Yes, the Saint Francis that's really known for his love for animals and his ability to talk to animals. There's two stories about him. Um, one of them is like he was out with a group of um, his followers and they um, ran into a bunch of birds. And when he saw the birds, he was like, okay guys, let's stop for a minute. Um, I need to preach to my friends, to my um, sisters and brothers here. And so he starts preaching to the birds and the birds don't leave. So it's one of the stories. So he had a real love. That's why you see a lot of times statues of St. Francis with like a little bird bath and little birds sitting there. So if you Google it, you're gonna, you're gonna see it. It's very famous. Um, and then the second encounter, which is really interesting with him and the animals, is a little town. And in that town, there, they had issues with like a wolf that would come in and the wolf would catch their livestock and eat it, which is a bit of a problem, like, because you raise livestock for your family, right? And so this wolf would take it and take it away. So St. Francis came and he ran walked out of town and he ran into that wolf and in some way had a conversation with that wolf um, and pretty much he finds out the wolf goes into town to catch like the animals whatever he's taking because he's hungry and the people don't feed him and <laughs> so Francis goes back and says hey you know I brought the wolf along with me but let's make an agreement so the wolf will not come back and kill your animals if you promise to feed him, to give, to make sure he has food. So people are like, all right. And these are two famous legends of St. Francis, um, which, which are known like all over the place, but that's just a really small piece of who he was. St. Francis was a man like who grew up in a pretty wealthy family. So, Growing up as a young man, he lived, he lived life. Like he lived the high life. He was like where the party was at the time and did all the things that people in that society did. And he was really happy in that. And then at some point he gets drafted into the military or he joins the military. I know how that worked in that time, but he was part of the military and he gets into war and in that war he gets hurt and gets captive, uh, captive uh, captured by the enemy not captured captured by the enemy and then he's in that enemy camp and he gets really sick and in that time he starts rethinking his life is that really what I want and then eventually he gets home he still does stuff for his dad and um, and then a beggar comes to town like and he's selling things for his dad like silk and stuff that his dad would sell and this beggar is there and he sees him and Francis's job is to sell the stuff from his dad and then bring the money home at the end of the day so he sees this beggar and at the end of the day he's looking for that beggar again and he gives him all the money he made during the day his his dad is obviously furious because um, that was his income for the day and his son just gave it all away. He gave the beggar probably a great chance to a new life, to restart his life, which is awesome. But his dad didn't see it that way. So he was not very happy with his son. Um, but you see like slowly there's a transformation happening in his life. He starts realizing like there's more than the life that I have there. And eventually he comes to a point where, you know, he didn't really have a faith before, but he starts to really follow God and gets excited about him. And he decides he wants to live his life the way Jesus called us to live our life, or the way Jesus lived his life. And so for him, that meant a bit living a life in poverty. So he pretty much gave up everything he had his family heritage and everything and took on the priesthood. 
and started living in poverty. He went around all over the place and lived poor. He lived with the poor and was with the poor. And over time, he had a group of followers. And all of them had a heart for the poor. But not to live in a way that they were better than them, but live there to do something for them. And he encouraged all his followers. This was his biggest thing, to live like Jesus. To live their life by the principles Jesus taught us. And to do those things. And that's how he lived his life. And that's how he inspired people. It was huge for him to inspire people to remember, hey, live the way Jesus taught us to live. Do the things he called us to do. And out of that, he created the Franciscan, or the Franciscan order started. And that's the greatest principle, like to live that way, that in the way Jesus taught us. And if you look at the impact the Franciscans had over the world, with living that out, you see a tremendous impact for the gospel. You see an impact to so many people that were touched through that. Because Francis was willing to say, you know, there's more than this life that I have. He wasn't willing to just push it down, this feeling of like, hey, there's more, and to say, I'll just keep living and just ignore it. But he listened to that inside of him, like saying like, hey, there's more. What you're having right now is not enough. That's not right. There's more for you. There's more for you. And he stepped into that more. And the Franciscans are around today thousand years later I think he lived around or 800 years later he lives around 1200 it's a long long time ago but if you look at that he laid his life down to say like I want to follow the teachings of Jesus and want to live them I want to encourage you with the life of Francis to apply the same principle to our lives it doesn't mean we have to all live in poverty. That was his specific call and what they try to live by. But we all have to, the call to live by the teachings Jesus has given us, right? Look at the Beatitudes. Look at the Sermon on the Mountain. Look at how he taught his disciples. What did he teach them? I want to encourage you to look into those teachings and to learn what Jesus taught us and how to live. And then step into that and live it out in our lives. Because that's the key thing with Francis. The key thing was for him, first of all, to know Jesus, right? And he did. And then secondly, to live out the teachings he taught. To make an impact in the world. And that brought the gospel further. And it showed the love of Jesus in a greater way. It's amazing. So let's look into that. Let's look into the teachings of Jesus. And then let's start living those. The things he called all of us to do. So Jesus, help us in that. To not just know your teachings in our head but to live them, to let them be part of our lives. And we need your help with that. We can't do that on our own. We need you, Jesus. Help us to live them. Help us to live them out. Because with you, it's possible. Without you, if we just do it on our own, we're going to have a problem. So Jesus, help us to live it out with you. Guide our steps in it. Point us to the right things that are right for this season to live out in your teachings. And then let us live the way you lived. 
and show people how loved they are by treating them the way you treated them and by living the call you called us to. Thank you, Jesus. Bless everyone that's watching this. Help all of us to dig into your word in a way that we understand the teachings and then let us lift them out. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Friend, have a blessed week. And don't forget, look into the teachings of Jesus. And then live them out. Bye.